The subprime mortgage crisis was contained, they said. Nothing to worry about. No chance of a financial crisis. No chance of a collapse. But what happened? Exactly what they said would never happen. All throughout the entire crisis, they downplayed it. Today, there are still millions who have never really recovered. What does that tell you about those in control and their true motives? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to talk about real estate. We're going to look at bubbles. We're going to talk about cryptocurrency. We're going to go into the economy and I've got several other other articles to cover as well. Some interesting stuff. So stay tuned. Let's go. I quoted this in my first book, but I think it's really important to have this in the back of your mind for the remainder of not just this video, but all of my videos. John Maynard Keynes, by a continuing process of inflation, governments can confiscate secretly and unobserved an important part of the wealth of their citizens. That's usually the part where you get that quote. And if you continue on, I think it makes a lot more sense. By this method, they not only confiscate, but they confiscate arbitrarily. And while the process impoverishes many, it actually enriches some. The sight of this arbitrary rearrangement of riches strikes not only at security, but at confidence in the equity of the existing distribution of wealth. The one point I'm going to make here is that when they do this, it's a secret to those who are affected most by it. And that, to me, is the most sinister part. Some really good stuff in this article here that, of course, is the focus of today. Real estate investor who shorted subprime mortgages says this housing boom is in a bubble too. And we're talking about billionaire Jeff Green. He made a fortune betting against the housing market over a decade ago before it crashed. How long does it last? It depends. How long do you keep the faucet open and this money running? Of course, they're talking about how cheap the debt is today. And you can see Absolutely. I think we're in an omni bubble. How long does it last? Depends how long you keep the faucet open and this money running. There's just so much money in corporate balance sheets and people's balance sheets and their bank accounts that has driven prices of everything higher. But at some point, this has to stop. So let's be very clear. He's not saying that's going to happen now. He's not saying that's going to happen this year, but he's saying it's going to be bad. And then you see uh, he's suggesting, you know, right here, not the first person to suggest the market is overheating, although his previous bet against the housing market in the mid 2000s makes his comments Friday notable. Okay, when you see prices going up the way they've gone up, you have to ask yourself, why did this happen? My view, and this is the important part here, is that it happened 80% because of the extraordinary amount of liquidity in the economy, 20% because of the fundamentals. And I do absolutely agree with this. Maybe the percentages are not accurate. That, that's not the point. What you have to understand is, Yes, people were buying homes, they're going and doing things they weren't before because now they don't need to be near the city center as often. And so they're purchasing these homes and they're buying more in the suburbs. They're going to rural areas. So that's changing the dynamics and the downtown cores are not as, let's say, sought after and this and that. But the reason why this is happening is because of the central banks. Quote, I think we're going to have inflation that no one is forecasting whatsoever, and it's going to have to lead to much higher interest rates, and that is going to slow down all of these markets. Absolutely. Higher inflation means higher interest rates. They can't do away, they, you know, you can't change that. If you have high inflation, you have to snuff it out with higher interest rates, and there's no doubt about that whether or not we're going to see official interest rates rise beyond sort of this range that they suggest, we'll see. 
I covered this in a previous video and I wanted to touch on it before I show you what's next. USD share of global official reserves and you could see the percentage of allocated reserves has fallen down to about 59%, I believe is the exact number there. Haven't been at these levels since 1995. So the US dollar is losing, slowly, losing its global official reserve currency status some have suggested it's going to be next will be the imf sdr some suggest it's going to be china's currency some say it's a basket of currencies what you have to understand is that there isn't just one reserve currency countries use many reserve currencies however the us dollar is the most popular this is part of that exclusive this is out of reuters china opens its borders to billions of dollars of gold imports china has given domestic and international banks permission to import large amounts of gold into the country okay and it's basically trying to say that it's helping support the global gold prices after month of declines and essentially that they're going to be bringing this in china is the world's biggest gold consumer gobbling up hundreds of tons of the precious metal worth tens of billions of dollars each year but its imports plunged and local demand dried up but now this is starting to come back online so they want this to happen some are suggesting that this is part of the backing of china's currency with gold i am not suggesting that i know we've heard we've heard from you know jim rickards and all these different people that have suggested this is going to happen as far as i'm concerned at this point that's speculation but i do think it's interesting that's all before we get into the Money GPS insights for today's video, I wanted to show you this and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Median real personal incomes by quintile. Essentially breaking it down and guess what? No surprise. The richer you are, the richer you're getting. The poorer you are, the poorer you're getting. The rich get rich, the poor get poorer. Okay, this is an absolute fact over a period. The one thing I want to note before we move on, if you can see it right here. So, so the uh, top is the top 5%, this line right here. The top 5% over the years from 1967. I think it's showing us probably about until 2018. Uh, it's hard to tell on here. But you see the direction, right? So that's the top 5%. And then you also see this, which is essentially the uh, right here, top 80 to 100%. But because of the top 5% being included in that, it's significantly skewing the numbers. Okay, so if you were to take out the top 5% from it, I'm sure that this line would be a lot, a lot different. Okay, so imagine that. And that brings me to the Money GPS Insights. You know, when you look at what has happened over the years, it is very clear. The activities of the central banks, just like Keynes had suggested, are done intentionally to take from the public. We know this to be a fact. So what do people do? Well, usually at the very end of the cycle, they all get in. They buy houses and they buy stocks and they buy tulips and they buy anything that they can get their hands on because it's that fear of missing out. And it goes higher and it goes higher and it goes higher. And then people are thinking, I got to get in. And they take leverage and they use debt and they use margin and they sell the kidney to make more money. And maybe it goes up even higher. But at some point, a huge, huge percentage of the people get wiped out. Some will succeed, some will become wealthy, but the vast majority end up worse off. And you could see on the chart, decade after decade after decade after decade, cycles in and out, up and down. The same patterns repeat. The elite, the so-called elite, will maintain their status and everybody else has to fight, fall in between poverty and the middle class. And the cycles go up and down and up and down. And that's the way it goes. 
I posted about this on the blog or community section of my YouTube channel and on Patreon and Twitter. There's a single New Jersey Deli doing $35,000 in sales valued at $100 million in the stock market, if you can believe it or not. And I thought to myself, is this a popular deli? Does it have something special I'm not aware of? Well, take a look at this. Hedge fund manager David Einhorn warned of dangers for retail investors that he sees in the market. And one of his main examples was a tiny New Jersey deli with a market cap of more than $100 million. This particular deli here showing you the value is uh, the value despite totaling $35,000 in sales in the last two years combined. Combined. Someone pointed us to Hometown International, which owns a single deli in rural New Jersey. It reached a market cap of $113 million on February 8th. The largest shareholder is the CEO, CFO, treasurer, and director, who also happens to be a wrestling coach of the high school next door to the deli. The pastrami must be amazing. And isn't that true when you think about the valuation of this company. Now, obviously, there must be something else to it, but the market is crazy. Let's say it with me. Stop everything you're doing. Even if you're in public, just say it out loud. This is crazy. This is crazy. Credit Suisse is sued over Greensill Capital and Archegos. Small pension fund claims bank misled it. Pursues class action. It's one of the first lawsuits filed uh, since the two collapses. We're going to see what happens here. I'm not going to cover all the details. Just simply pointing out that this is not over yet. Okay, so you're talking about Greensill. That was, I believe, uh, beginning in February. You saw March with Archegos. You look back and see the failures that have been happening and they're in the billions and the billions. So I'm wondering what happens here. Is it going to spiral out of control with these derivatives that they create? This is something that I will keep a close eye on. And just essentially, uh, as the news unfolds, trust me, I'm going to have that info for you. Really quick note I wanted to make. I found this to be really, I mean, it was a shock to me, but take a look. Anyway, Apple Music told artists it pays a penny per stream. The disclosure made in a letter to artists delivered Friday via the services artist dashboard and sent to labels and publishers reflects the music streaming services increasing efforts to show that they are artist friendly. Apple's penny per stream. First of all, I thought to myself, I mean, I know there's a lot of streams happening, a penny just seems like something so minimal. But check this out. Apple's penny per stream payment structure, which music industry experts say can dip lower, is roughly double what Spotify pays music rights holders per stream. Now that to me just shows you what has happened where people used to go see live concerts. You know, that's not happening today. We go with the records and the cassettes and the CDs. Nobody was buying CDs once the downloading craze happened. Then we went to downloading songs for 99 cents a piece. Now you just stream it and they're paying a penny. And how much does the actual artist get from that when you have a, you know, a production company and so on? So I'm just highlighting the fact that things have really changed for this industry. That's for sure. Dogecoin spikes 400% in a week, stoking fears of a cryptocurrency bubble. You know, this is one particular case where, you know, it just went absolutely straight up. If you see the chart, it has gone crazy. And I just wanted to point this out because you see this excess appearing in different places. And that's never a healthy sign. Miami and you know the area and Florida in general has definitely done much better with their economy than 
you know, a lot of other places. There's no doubt about it. And this article happens to be, uh, you know, New York City's biggest restaurateurs are turning Miami into America's hottest dining scene. They mention, you know, the celebrities and the A-listers and the billionaires that are going to these particular restaurants, what they're doing, how successful they have been, because people are traveling there. People are moving there. More business is flocking there. There's a lot of changes that have been happening that are positive for the economy there I'm talking about economic aspects here only okay so this is something interesting where we have places that are locked down the restaurants are going out of business we're seeing a much different trend happening in Miami in Florida where there's been largely you know very minimal lockdowns and so as a result businesses are doing well in, in comparison, definitely to the, the, you know, the majority of the, the major cities around, that is absolutely true. You can go in a little deeper and see, you know, there's more to it than that. That's for sure. But I just wanted to point this out. If you're interested in sort of the, the restaurant scene, if you want to know what's happening right there locally, this article does break that down. So definitely check it out. Links will be in the description. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, you want to know how to sell stuff online for free, check out the amazongps.com. Have you seen my two books? If not, definitely check it out at the link in the description. Have you seen this video? No? Well, you definitely want to check it out. Click it and I'll see you there.